Hello everyone, Chris Profi, Musically Obsessed. Yes! Ooh, I don't know why I just had so much energy right there. Um, probably because I went for two walks today. Feeling good. I guess there is some truth to like actually getting outside and getting some fresh air. Um, I am going to be entering a contest today. And the contest that I am entering is for Blind Island Personal Oasis Contest. If you have not checked out Blind Island, check the channel out. Very, very cool. Uh, great music. Uh, I like the vibe. Uh, it's just real chill. And this contest is pretty chill as well. Here's what we have to do. There's a few components. First of all, he wanted us to pick out 10 records that bring us joy. So there is my stack of 10 records that bring me joy. And randomly, we have to pick three out of here blindly. Get it? Blindly, Blind Island. Without looking. And then talk about why they bring us joy. So I've got my stack here in front of me. Uh, I'm going to mix it up. I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look, not going to look. All mixed up and um, I'm just going to randomly pick the one in the front here and this will be the first one that I talk about ah Slayer South of Heaven this brings me a lot of joy now you might not think with a cover like that that it would bring anyone joy, but this definitely brings me joy. I listen to this album a lot, and I listen to it on Spotify as well when I'm at the gym. It gives me energy to work out. But when I'm at home, I love to just spin this. This is my favorite Slayer record. I remember when I first heard this album, and I've, I've told the story before. It was this and Dement and Voivod's Dimension Hatros or Hatros. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It was those two cassette tapes that I listened to. And uh, I was totally blown away. This album is amazing. Um, and if you like Slayer, you already know about this album. Uh, a lot of times people go to Rain and Blood as their number one album. Mm, not for me. That's a good album. South of Heaven is my number one album by them. I feel like they took Rain and Blood and they uh, made it better. Rain and Blood is just like pummeling you over the head every freaking song. And not that that's a bad thing. South of Heaven has some different textures, some different soundscapes in it. Um, creepy intro to South of Heaven, awesome song, lyrics, awesome. Silent Scream, Thrash Masterpiece, Live Undead, Behind the Crooked Cross really really good song um mandatory suicide i love the end when tom Araya is reciting that poetry at the end of mandatory suicide so good side two ghosts of war such an underrated song i love it it opens up uh, very quiet you almost think that there's something wrong with your stereo and then bam it hits you over the head thrash masterpiece i love the uh the middle section too slows down read between the lies probably one of my favorite slayer songs about um, corrupt um, religion and corrupt preachers. Just a really cool song. Cleanse the Soul, Dissonant Aggressor, yes, the cover of the Priest classic. And then it ends with Spill the Blood. Uh, this came out in 1988, produced by Rick Rubin, the classic lineup of Slayer. They were just amazing at this time. This is a reissue, 180 gram reissue on Deaf American. Uh, just an amazing, amazing album. But if you know Slayer, you already know the album. And for me, it's their, it's their best. Okay, so let me mix this up a little bit more. I'm closing my eyes. I have my head up. I have no idea what I'm going to pick. I'm dropping records here. Oh, my God. Luckily, they're in protective sleeves. And I'm going to pick this one. Oh, my God. It's all about the metal today. Iron Maiden Killers. Yes. This is my second favorite Iron Maiden album, Somewhere in Time being the first. Just look at that cover. Amazing, amazing album. 
Um, Paul Diano on vocals. And what I love about this album, I, I like their first album, but I feel that Killers was better. And um, the Paul Diano years are underrated, in my opinion, in the Iron Maiden catalog. They had such a cool sound. It was really heavy. New wave of British heavy metal, but they also had a punk vibe to this music. And Paul Diano's vocals are so cool. They're very rough and punk-like. This is on, uh, this is a 180 gram uh, reissue. What do you have on this album? This album is just amazing. It opens up with the Ides of March, which is a, a killer instrumental. Wrath Child, they're still playing that nowadays in the set. Murder in the Rue Morgue, love that song. Another Life, Genghis Khan, Innocent Exile. What's great about this album too is it's got so many great songs that you don't really hear that often. They're not overplayed. It's kind of like, you know, how many times can we hear Run, Run to the Hills? Um, you know, or uh, Hallowed Be Thy Name. I love those songs, but you know, how often can you say, you know, I've heard Innocent Exile? Not that often. Side two, Killers, awesome song. Prodigal Son, Purgatory, and Drifter, which is so heavy. So if you are into Maiden, if you are into new wave of British heavy metal, um, definitely check out Killers. It's my second favorite Maiden album. And I just love the energy, the youthful energy. They had so much to prove at this time. Steve Harris was on fire with his writing. Dave Murray, great leads. And Paul Diano, amazing, amazing vocals. So killers. All right, I got one more album. I'm closing my eyes. Uh, head up, I'm mixing these up here. Still dropping albums, gosh darn it. All right, let's see here. What's this? I'm just gonna pick this first one. Oh, okay. Black Flag in my head. So this has been a metal and punk show today. Black Flag, famous band on the SST label. Probably my favorite band on the SST label. This happens to be my favorite album by them. Um, I've talked about this album before. Raymond Pettibon, um, artwork on the cover. This is the back cover. Classic lineup of Henry Rollins on vocals, Greg Ginn on guitar, Kira bass, Bill Stevenson drums. This came out in 1985. What I love about this album is that um, it's not damaged. <laughs> and, and again, you know, nothing against damaged. I like damaged. I, I understand the significance of the album damaged, but I like what Henry Rollins was doing with his vocals on this album. Um, I feel like he his voice was seasoned by this point. Uh, he was doing some strange vocals on this album too, sort of creepy. Uh, the guitar sounds are just creepy and jazzy and just maniacal and just all over the place. Um, this was originally going to be a Greg Ginn solo record. Henry Rollins heard the music and said, I wanna put some lyrics to that. Great, great album. It opens up with Paralyzed, The Crazy Girl, and Black Love. Those three songs are awesome. It sounds nothing like other Black Flag songs. It's sort of creepy, muddy. Uh, the vocals are way down in the mix. It's just, it doesn't sound anything like what you think a punk sound would be, but it's very cool. Some metal leanings in there as well. Uh, White Hot, In My Head, such a great song. Side two, Drinking and Driving, Upbeat. Uh, a Black Flag hit, if you will. Retired at 21, Society's Tease. Those are some cool uh, melodies in those songs and some cool arrangements that Greg Ginn was doing. And then the song, It's All Up To You. So all in all, this is a great song. They were expanding their sound. They were being experimental. Um, they were pushing the punk envelope and I like it. I know that um, a lot of fans stopped listening to Black Flag around this point because it wasn't damaged and it was straying away from that traditional punk sound. But this album, that's why I like it, because they were pushing the envelope a little bit. And, uh, you know, I still listen to this album and I still think it's awesome. So those are my three albums that bring me joy and happiness. 
and I guess some energy as well. Okay, now, he wants us to share our favorite drink. Well, if you watch my videos, you know I love my coffee. And a lot of times I'm drinking coffee in my videos. I need my coffee. I love my coffee in the morning. I love my coffee in the afternoon. I sometimes like my coffee at night too. Uh, I ha happen to be drinking from my Ancient Aliens mug. And one of my favorite coffees is Cafe Bustelo. Just a great espresso style coffee. Love it. If you like a, a, a richer roast, a, uh, a darker coffee that, that just gives you that coffee flavor, that coffee, coffiness, Cafe Bustelo. Whew, I have to take a breath. Did I just say coffee coffiness? Alrighty then. Now, the last thing we have to do is give a shout out to somebody in the VC that we have never given a shout out to. Well, I'm gonna give a shout out to Brian over at Cosmic Vinyl. He's freaking hilarious. Every time I watch his videos, I'm like cracking up. And I tell you, now, during this time of like stress and, and added pressure that we're all going through, it's great to see somebody like uh, Brian over at Cosmic Vinyl adding some humor and, and bringing some humor to our lives. And he's just got this, it's just a great uh, presence in front of the camera. I love his silliness. I love his voice. I like, um, my battery's going low on me here. I love just how he presents things. It's hilarious. So uh, I'm going to give a shout out to him. My, listen, my, my phone is dying on me, so I'm going to end this video. Congratulations to uh, Blind Island. I love the channel. I can't wait to watch more videos. And uh, that's my personal, personal Oasis contest. So listen to music. <laughs>